Hey gang, beautiful day, 50 degrees, so I will be riding the new Walkie H6 Max to work, and I'm expecting a pretty light work day, so when we get there, let's talk about all the great new upgrades and a few things that kind of left me scratching my head. Let's go. Hey, I made it. So I didn't get the second battery with the Walkie H6 Max. It's on back order. They said they send it out to me as soon as they can. So when they do, that's when I'll do like range testing and riding views and things like that. So for today, I figured we just kind of go through the bike, check out all the new and improved components and not so improved and give you all my take on them. So let's go through this beast, starting at the front with the tires. So this bike comes with CST's BFT model tires as opposed to the Kenny Crusades that earlier models came with. The CSTs are a cheaper model tire and they have a less aggressive footprint. Now this could be seen as a downgrade, but after riding them, I think they suit the bike fine and are great on the street. And since they're wrapped around mags, this is really more of a street bike anyway. Now if you think you're going to spend more time off-road, I'd probably look more into a bike like the X3 Pro. Now I know this is kind of a moped looking style bike, but these are bicycle tires. They are thin and I live in Goathead territory. So <laughs> part for the course on my first ride, I got a flat. And yeah, I know better than to go ride without any kind of tennis armor or sealant, but I get the bike out of the box and I get all stoked and I want to go. But if this is going to be your first time getting a fat tire bike, just know they are magnets for pokey things. So the CST tubes that come with these bikes are labeled as thick, but do yourself a favor, get yourself some liners or and some sealant because um, changing a flat on one of these heavy e-bikes on the side of the road sucks. And of course I got my flat in the rear, but I caught a ride home. Now once I got it home, I realized that taking the rear wheel off this bike is a lot easier than the older models. And those are wrapped in the same plastic fenders as the older models. I like them. They're tough. They're light. They're quiet. Uh, they do the job. And of course, a huge upgrade to the headlight in looks and function. Now, the projection from this light is really nice, really wide, but it kind of gets cut up by this grill. So I'm actually considering whittling that off there. <laughs> nice and aggressive horn, slightly higher pitch than the old one. So if you're planning on frequent and bike paths, I would consider getting a little ding ding bell for your handlebars because this horn is rude. You might make a fellow rider or jogger wet themselves. Now on my commutes, I like a loud obnoxious horn. It works for me. The forks are the same style, but they are upgraded. Now they still have the preload and the lockout. I don't really mess with the preload, but the lockout's nice when you're on flat terrain so you're not wasting energy in the front suspension. The kicker is the extra inch and a half of travel they give you. The old forks were three and a half inches, these are five. Not only are they really cush, but they actually lift the front of the frame, changing the dynamics of that folding stem. Of course, I totally did away with the folding stem on my old bike. It's the same stem on this one, but on the first generation, it had this awkward forward angle. It just felt weird. Now, because of that lifted angle on the front of this bike, thanks to those forks, that stem sits perfect, man. It feels great. I actually dig it. I don't think I'll be doing away with it. And on the old model, the clamp tube was really long. I actually had to take an inch and a half off the bottom of it to get it to go down far enough. Obviously, they addressed that, so thumbs up. Now, of course, everything else in the cockpit is all new, including the handlebars. Now, I'm kind of on the fence about most of this stuff because all three of my old bikes were all laid out the same and I liked it. What I love is that they widened the bars and gave us adult sized grips. Nice wide adjustable brake levers, twist throttle with integrated horn button. They went from the old eight speed Shimano Altus to the seven speed Turney. Now this is a downgrade obviously gearing wise, but it is nice to have the shifter up and out of the way. 
The Altus has these triggers that bang my fingers, and I don't use them anyway. And the control pad is a little bit generic. You see this one on a whole lot of bikes, but it's functional. It does a trick. It's fine. This display is really nice, and it's Bluetooth. There's an app with it. I'm not going to go through all the settings, and most of the advanced settings should be messed with anyway, but there's a few glitches here. You're supposed to be able to make adjustments to the PAS levels, but they disabled that function for some reason, so you're stuck with five levels. Not sure why they did that, but I guess they had a reason. And there's supposed to be an auto headlight function, so the lights come on whenever it gets dark, but that's not on this bike. This is supposed to be the AL sensitivity setting, but it just says sensitivity, and I haven't gotten them to come on automatically, so I'm not sure about that. And there's no wattage meter on here. There was one on the old bike. I'm not sure how much I used it, but it'd be nice to have. As for the app, it's a little bit redundant, and the nomenclature's a little weird, so in order to connect, you actually do add a bike, even though you already added the bike, so when you start up, you hit add a bike, and it'll bring up your bike, and you click it, and it connects no problem um, and like I said the controls are all redundant but the navigation is cool um, tracks your route and tells you how much juice you used and things like that how long you were out and of course the geolocating your bike is epic and it'll run sort of a diagnostic test on all your connections so that's pretty cool and if you use iOS you can add your bike to the find my app and Siri will locate it for you hey Siri where's my bike looking for my bike my bike was last seen three hours ago in Nampa. And there it is. Now the folding mechanism on this bike is the same as the old bikes and it can be a little bit awkward at first, but after you've done it a few times, you get the hang of it. Now on this model, they didn't do the extra body work to hide the welds. Uh, at first it bugged me, but I get it. I'm guessing they had to pull back on a few things in order to do all these upgrades and still keep the price point attainable. Mainly the body work, the tires, the shifter, stuff like that. And honestly, if you didn't have one of the previous bikes, you probably wouldn't know any different. So call me a spoiler. <laughs> Ain't honesty a bitch. Same old folding pedals, I'll probably be getting rid of those. But the crank set and chain ring are all new. It's still a 52 tooth, but instead of the two piece quick change 130 mil pattern chain ring, you get this guy, which is held fast to the crank. And you get these chain guards on both sides. And I'm okay with it, because not only does it look great, but this bike has longer dimensions thanks to the bigger battery, which means a longer chain. So those guards are going to keep your chain home when your derailleur gives you some slop. The seat is the same as the other bikes. It's real nice. It flips up. And they give you this textured seat post so it stays put. And obviously the new 40 amp battery is a big old chunk. Double the size and weight of the old rear battery. The connections are at the bottom now, so you're going to want to be mindful of that and keep it clean. Make sure you don't set the battery down in dirt or water either. And the locking mechanism on this battery is also a keyed on switch, so you got to leave the key in the battery in order to ride. So an added extra layer of security there. And I forgot to mention, in the display you can actually set a password to turn on the bike. So I'm not going to mess with that personally, but it is yet another layer of security. As we head to the rear, uh, the swing arm, the suspension, rack, and tail light are all OG. Comes with the jump seat, and I got a basket on there, but I usually roll with my Plano box, and I stuck a fly rod holder on there. And you'll notice I stuck some cable schlock on that rear swing arm. You can get this stuff on Amazon. It's just a four and three quarter inch strip of neoprene with a Velcro strip. That'll keep the paint on the swing arm from getting all chipped from that chain living in high gear. Speaking of gears, you get a 14 to 26 freewheel on here, so aggressive riding is going to kind of suck. That's going to need an upgrade. Cool thing is this rear wheel comes off super easy compared to the other bikes, and the cable is on the brake side, so upgrading that freewheel is going to be a piece of cake, and I'll be doing that ASAP, believe me. And besides the battery capacity and the 1000 watt motor, I'd say these new brakes are the top of the ticket upgrade on this bike. Now I never really had issues with the two piston 180s on the old bikes, but this bike does 33 miles an hour out of the box. So yeah, I dig these four piston 203s. And they are super slick looking, all shiny and chrome. That's right. Now since the bike is shipped without the front wheel on, I highly recommend adjusting those brakes. I made a quick little video about it around here somewhere. So that's all I got for y'all tonight. I'm really looking forward to breaking this bike in. And oh yeah, there is a break-in period by the way. 
The battery gets a good conditioning from going through a few cycles and all the machine gears gel and mesh and shed some friction. The brakes get burned in, the tires lose that new stick and all that. So don't judge this bike right out of the box. Give it a bit. So thanks so much for watching guys. I really appreciate you. I'll definitely be coming out with a lot more videos on these bikes. So do me a favor and slug that bug. And leave a comment about any mods or your experiences with the bikes. And I'll see you then. And as always, I gotta thank Walkie E-Bikes, Tannis Armor, Cafferty Cyclery in downtown Nampa, and Ex Nito Helmets. Guys, I've been wearing this helmet every ride for the past couple of months, and I so dig it. It's my new favorite. They got all kinds of dope styles, so if you wanna check them out, I got a link in the description. It'll save you a couple of bucks, and it helps me out too. So until next time, stay lightened. Cheers. That's my pizza. <laughs> Do you want some Floki?